I have a downloadable ebook for you guys for this particular video. So be sure that you're looking at the resources section uh, and looking at the downloadables so that you can get your passive income planner as we're going through this course, because we're going to use that planner for this first lecture, which is all about identifying your strengths. The first step that you want to do when you're thinking about creative passive income pipelines is to really identify your strengths. So these are things like what are you good at what do you enjoy doing what skills and expertise do you have that you feel like you can share with other people and i'm going to share you with you a kind of crazy story because one of the hardest things to answer is when i ask you what are you good at what are you passionate about most people's minds go totally blank and that's because we overestimate the things that we know I know for myself as a virtual assistant, I'm constantly like, yeah, but everyone knows how to book travel. But it turns out not every virtual assistant knows how to book corporate travel. And I forget these things sometimes. We all don't have the same strengths. We all don't have the same interests. So if you are suddenly drawing a blank and you're like, I don't know what I can possibly teach or sell online, I guarantee there is something. There is something in your life that you know how to do or know uh, how to share that somebody is willing to pay for. And I want to share this crazy story with you. There is a woman who, um, she's in her late 60s and she sells, last I heard it was something like $60,000 worth of content. And she does it by selling courses about how to take care of goats. When I first heard this story, I nearly fell off my chair because I was like, I cannot believe there's a big enough market out there that people want to know about how to take care of goats. And I tell you this story just to reiterate that no matter how niche you think one of your interests or skills are, if you're just like, no one, you know, maybe you know how to take care of goats. If you're like, no one's going to pay me to tell them about how to take care of goats. I'm telling you right now, you're wrong. Give it a try. You never know what kind of market is out there for your skills and your expertise. The other thing that I want to say to you is you don't have to be an expert. You do not have to be an expert in goats. You do not have to be the best t-shirt designer in the world. You do not have to be the best writer in the world. All you need to do in order to teach something is just be a few steps ahead of somebody else. So let's say you're watching this right now. I'm just going to pull something out of a, out of thin air. Let's say you are a copywriter and you're just getting started. Let's say you've done this copywriting business for a year and you've learned a bunch of stuff about copywriting business. You've learned about the best tools for your business. You've learned about how to find clients who need copywriters. If you're just a few steps into your journey, you can sell knowledge to help somebody who's brand new to the copywriting industry. You can sell online courses about how to find your first copywriting client. You can sell an online course all about the 10 best AI tools for your copy editing business. These are things that you can do even if you've not been doing this for 20 years. So before we even move on to the rest of the content, I do want you to pull up your planner and start filling out what you think some of your strengths are and then some examples. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to do a kind of brain dump about what your strengths are. They could be personal strengths. They could be business strengths. If you are an incredible artist and you're wonderful with watercolors, that is a strength. And as an example, you could write down uh, that you could teach somebody the basics of watercolor or how to get started or how to pick brushes. Um, if you are an incredible accountant, that is a strength. You can break that strength down into doing quarterly taxes for your clients. There are so many different ways that you can break your strengths into different examples. This is the first place where we're going to start. When you're done with this strength planner, the second page of your planning ebook is a more broad brainstorming session. The reason I put this following your strengths and examples is because let's just go back to that watercolor example. Let's say one of your strengths is you're an incredible artist. There is a huge market out there for artists who can teach other people how to paint, how to draw, the basics of shading, etc. So I want you to take that strength and turn that into a passive income idea. So take that watercolor and ask yourself, what skills about watercolor can I share? What exactly about watercolor am I so passionate about? What about watercolor, what aspects about watercolor can I talk about with little to no prep? And what can I offer 
that other people aren't already offering. And then the last question I'd like you guys to brainstorm is how much time can I devote to this? Because this is an important one. Um, passive income takes time. I know I've said that a million times already. Um, I can tell you from my own personal experience that each of my courses that I post online takes me about a hundred hours to create. I know that sounds crazy, but I script out everything. I plan out everything that's going into the course. I make the downloadable resources, uh, then the filming, then the editing, then the actual uploading. All in all, it could be anywhere from 50 to 100 hours, but I do average about 100 hours. So if you are somebody who only has a couple hours a day to devote to passive income pipelines, that's okay. But I want you to be realistic about it, about how much you could get done. So all this is on your brainstorming template. It's super crucial that you actually take the time to go through both your strengths planning and your brainstorm planning before, because if you get through the end of this course and you don't yet have an idea about stuff that you could share or things that you're passionate about or skills, it's going to be really hard to come up with an idea in the moment if you haven't done the prep work. So welcome to the first really meaty section of this course where we're talking about online courses. And we're gonna start with talking about what kind of topics can you teach, AKA what kind of online courses can you sell? Hopefully you've actually gone through the process of brainstorming things that you're an expert in or passionate or knowledgeable about, or even if you're just a couple steps ahead of the rest of us, um, you've thought about some topics that you can actually teach. If you haven't done the planner, stop this video right now, go back and start planning out some topics that you are passionate about and that you could teach online. Your course topic can be about almost anything so long as there is an interested market. And I'm going to show you how to make sure that there is a market who's looking for the kind of content that you are thinking about selling. There's two schools of thought when it comes to figuring out what people are willing to pay for and what kind of content people are hungry for. The first school of thought is to go onto social media and utilize polls. LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, all these things have polls nowadays. So if you are thinking about, let's say three to four different topics that you might wanna teach online, you can put a poll on your social media and just say, hey friends and followers, if you were to pick one course that I'm designing, what interests you the most? So that's just one very informal way to start getting a sense of interest in the market. And I can tell you from experience, I do polls uh, for my audience all the time. And I'm constantly surprised because the things that I think my audience will want are sometimes not the things that they actually vote for. So polls can be very helpful because you might think you have a pulse on what people want and you might be totally surprised that people want something completely different. The second thing you can do is you can actually do some online research, which I think polls plus online research are a great way to start thinking about what kind of topics you can sell and what kind of topics are in demand. Now, I've mentioned this before, but I'm a virtual assistant. So almost all of my courses, 95% of my courses are geared specifically towards virtual assistants. That's because I have expertise in the skills, the tools, the business management, etc. in virtual assistants. And I know that there's a market for it because I've done the market research. Virtual assistants has grown over the last decade into a $5 billion industry. So the demand is there worldwide. The interest is there. It's a no brainer for me to make courses for people who are VAs. You, know, you might be in a completely different boat. You might be an artist. You might be a farmer. You might be an accountant. You might be a coder. You might be somebody who's an expert in the Python language. Whatever you're an expert in, you'll want to start Googling to see if there is a market. It can be as simple as going to Google and typing in Python coder course and seeing what kind of stuff comes up. Now, having said all that, one of my favorite tools that I use again and again and again, regardless of where I am posting my online content is Udemy's Marketplace Insights page. So I'm going to link to their insights page on the downloadable resources here. Uh, make sure you are bookmarking this because it's actually a great way to get a sense for what students are looking for when it comes to online courses. Another reason why I like Udemy's Marketplace Insights so much is because Udemy has the vast majority share of online learners all over the globe. So they're a pretty good indicator for what people are looking for on this particular platform, but I find that it applies to lots of different things online. 
the way their insights works is you can actually type in a topic. So I'm just going to go back to the watercolor example. And uh, once you type in watercolor painting, you can you can not only search for different languages. So if you're a multilingual person, you're at a great advantage because you could teach a French in your uh, sorry, you could teach a course in your native language. Um, and there's probably less competition. It's because English is the global language. Most courses are in English. Just something to keep in mind. What I like about Udemy is that if you scroll down, they will tell you how high in demand and how popular this particular topic is. Um, so we can see here that student demand for learning about watercolors is high. Having said that, so is the number of courses on Udemy. What that indicates to me is that even though a lot of people want to learn about watercolor, there are so many courses out there that it may be hard for you to break into the market initially. This insights page is huge, and I do seriously want you to bookmark this because if you're thinking about a topic to sell, my favorite kind of topics are high in demand, but the number of courses I really want to be low to medium, meaning you have just found a potential hole in a marketplace where student demand is high, but not a lot of people are teaching that topic. Other things I want you to be mindful of um, and keep in mind that these uh, revenues per month are only are only applicable to, to Udemy at this particular time. But uh, so what this says to me is that the median revenue that a student is making from a Udemy course is $14 a month. That says to me that there are so many courses that it's quite hard to actually make money. Although it does look like the top course makes quite a bit of good income per month. If we scroll down, we get even more data, which is more helpful. So it breaks down uh, certain things that people are searching. So it looks like the vast majority of people are simply searching for watercolor or watercolor painting. Um, and you can also break it down into similar topics. The last thing I really like about Udemy's Marketplace Insights, again, whether you decide to use Udemy or not, and in a later section, we will talk about the benefits of using Udemy, and we'll talk briefly about some other um, platforms as well where you can sell courses, but uh, they do break down the top earners and you can not only see the ratings, but you can actually click on these courses and get a better sense for what people are selling and what people are buying. So this particular course is huge. It's unbelievable. It's seven hours of course material and you can look through all the lectures that they have. The reason that I think it's always valuable when you're thinking about creating a course is to look for other competitor courses is because you can see what kind of stuff they're including. And you can also see if you can identify any weaknesses in the course or any holes that you think that they're missing. For example, let's say you notice that there's only a two minute video on color mixing and you know quite a bit more about color mixing that you want to share. Well, maybe you focus your course so that it's centered on color mixing, something that this course is lacking. Um, but th this is just an example of how you can use the insights page to really figure out what is popular and what is not. And again, I've mentioned this before, but if you can find a course topic that is high in student demand, meaning the search volume is there, but there's not that many courses on that particular topic, you've just hit a gold mine. And let me tell you, back in 2018, when I was just getting started with this platform, I was doing a lot of thinking about what kind of virtual assistant courses I could teach. And the demand was high. And I noticed that a lot of other virtual assistants were teaching about how to start your business. So that was things like how to name your business, how to, you know, do you need insurance? Could you have to file LLCs, etc. So I thought to myself, that is not the course that I want to make first, because there are a lot of them. A lot of different VAs were teaching the same things over and over and over again. But doing the research, I noticed that there were only almost no courses that actually covered tasks like practice tasks or tools or things that we VAs actually need in our day to day business. So that was the first course I ever made. It was um, like 30 tools to use for your business. And it was also uh, became one of the best selling courses. And I think it's because I identified an opportunity um, where there was content that was lacking. So 
this is all to say that the first few lectures of this course are hopefully getting you very excited because if you do your planning right, if you brainstorm all the different skills and expertise that you have, and then you pair that with how to research either from doing polling, informal polling online, uh, doing Google just to see what's coming up on the internet, uh, and then using Udemy Insights page, all of these things together can be a really powerful way for you to figure out and identify where are there opportunities that you can teach something that's not being talked about enough. You're not even making any sense. Sorry, you ruined it on purpose. You know what? I'm hungry. I could really go for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Okay. Do you guys think you can write down some instructions and teach me how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Yeah. I'm done. Step one, get two pieces of bread out. Got them. Get a butter knife and get some PB. Take one piece of bread, spread it around with the butter knife. No, Dad, with the peanut butter. I'm just doing what it says. It says, take one piece of bread, spread it around with the, bu with the butter knife. Hold on. Get some jelly, rub it on the other half of the bread. Well, it doesn't say to do that. Put the breads together on top of each other. Take a big bite. <laughs> this doesn't taste like a peanut butter really sandwich. <laughs> Fail. I hope you guys enjoyed that peanut butter jelly exact directions video. I wanted to show you that for a very specific reason. And that's just to tell you that it is dang hard to help teach people in a way that makes sense to them. And that's because we as the instructors often feel like, well, something is obvious. Something is as obvious as building a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You're like, how hard is it? You just put peanut butter on bread and you go about your day. Only then to realize that your instructions might not be as clear as you think they are. My wife is a teacher and has been a teacher for about 15 years. When I first started making courses, I would actually ask her to look over my content and she would identify holes for me and be like, this is not clear. You haven't taught me how to do this first step first. And it really made me pull back and reassess how I was teaching people. So she told me to look into the peanut butter jelly method. And basically this method tells you that you have to be so exact in every single step of the way that you are holding people's hands throughout the teaching process. And I think the PB&J method is extremely helpful for new teachers like you who are new to online learning platforms. So I've put together another downloadable resource for you guys. Um, it's just called the peanut butter jelly method. And what it does, it was helps walk you through your topic that you're thinking about teaching. And it kind of breaks down all the elements that you need to think about before you build your curriculum. Now, the nice thing about online courses is that if you are to release a course that you think is perfectly clear and you start getting reviews back from students and they're telling you things like, it's not very clear or you're getting consistently low reviews, that signals to you that you have to go back and look through your curriculum and really making sure that you're spelling out step-by-step step exactly how to do something. Be sure to